I believe it's because we want to represent the diverse communities that we serve and people that um, would come to Manchester to see the South Asia Gallery. Um, we have a multicultural city and I think that you have to recognise that in what you're showcasing wherever you are, whether it's an art gallery or museum. Mm -hmm. So I think it's not just the trend of Indian art and um, it's the people, it's the, the people behind um, the trend. Yeah, and I, I, I think also though there's a you know, you think of some of the artists that we have in the in the show, there's um there is huge creativity, so there is an energy, you know. I I I I've not been to India, for example, for uh, a couple of years now, but but I know lots of friends who are there and colleagues in the arts. There is this real sense, there is a whole new generation, for example, of museums emerging in India. It's really exciting. So there is this kind of energy that's also, I think, what we see within diaspora communities. So if you think about the British Asian section that we have here in the show, that's really around us showing some of the, you know, platforming some of this great work that has never taken up space previously. And I think, you know, whether it's around growth in anthologies in South Asian literature, whether it's around lots and lots of really great exchanges, particularly in, in fields of music, you know, all of those, in a way, what we want is to have that energy at the heart of, of a gallery like this. So, you, do you think? You... Definitely. I think there's not been a platform before, and we hope that mm -hmm. the gallery, with the project space at the heart of it, is going to be where new and upcoming artists are able to showcase their work. Um, so, it's, it's what you said, it's was there a platform available? Hardly. I think yeah. it's been really difficult for artists to even get onto the first rung of the ladder. We've actually been working with some really interesting uh, museums across South Asia. So two of the um, collectives, so uh, Balraj and uh, Aziz, both amazing musicians in their own right, they've done fantastic. So there's a museum in um, uh, Bengaluru um, called the Indian Music Experience Museum. Uh, fantastic programming. They've done a music exchange. They've been working with young musicians in Manchester and in Bengaluru, and the two of them together have done this big festival, um, which will then come with the done their one there and then it will come to Manchester and I think we'll see more of those exchanges as well um, because actually those are I think what people in Manchester really really uh, are hankering for they want they want to see those yeah and, 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 and South Asia Gallery is not just South Asia in Manchester we yeah. really want that global connection it's you know it's a, a thing that will connect the two regions together mm -hmm. This is a five-year journey for curation, um, and really early on, um, just as you said, hierarchy was in there. It will, always will be. It's been a, a journey to make sure that hierarchy is not in there. So examples of how we broke that down was, I'm really um, vocal on using certain language. So when people used to say, the community, I used to say it's our community, regardless of your background or colour. That is our community. It's not. It's not an alien outside mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, the, our community would, didn't know the, the language museum professionals use. Mm -hmm. We created mm -hmm. a terminology document. It, I mean, I came to the museum. I hadn't a clue what some of the words were being said and what they meant. And um, that broke down hierarchy. Let's just all speak the same language. We made sure that everybody was valued for their input. Everybody was paid at the same rate. Nobody was higher or lower than anyone else, whether they were an 18-year-old student or they were a, a professor with their highest mm. scientific fields that they're in. Um, and everyone was, was given that time and space. So we had many voices. You can't hear those voices in the space of 
a month to um, we needed that two years to create those relationships you went off past history that that needed to be that seed needed to be there for then it to flourish to become what it is i think we had to have two years of building those relationships and creating that trust once you it's get there the community. Yeah. i mean yeah. once you get there that's mm. where that those that hierarchy just mm. falls away but i think you're right about museums you know i i am um, i often think that the in museums we have a i call it a veneer of inclusion um, so it, it looks inclusive, but you can pretty much guarantee it's on the museum's terms. Um, and actually, how do you break that down? Because that, that is a reality. You are an institution. So what are the ways of breaking it down? And I suppose one of the things we've done collectively as a museum is we've thought a lot about what an ethics of care means for a museum like this. So, you know, we care for collections, you know, four and a half million items, we were very good at caring for collections. But actually we've had whole institutional conversations about what it means to extend that care to people, uh, to beliefs, to ideas, to relationships. And actually what that sometimes looks like is just inviting those people to have a meal and get together and ask them what do you care about and listen like properly listen and then say okay we're not going to do something for you for goodness sake or, or to you we're going to do it with you how do we create the conditions to do it with you and as, as Lizrat says you know that's meant that we've actually we didn't have the right processes uh, all of our, and we still haven't got the right processes, we're still working it through. You know, the way that exhibitions are built and developed doesn't encourage this way of working. It takes a lot longer, it costs double, you know, but these things really matter because you build relationships for the long term. Um, but, and I think it is the direction of travel because what you get is stories you've never dreamed of, um, perspectives that you you just haven't quite imagined. And so from my perspective, you know, I've got no South Asian heritage whatsoever. This is British history. Mm. And it's made my understanding of my history more complex, more nuanced. And I think that's what museums are, are about, really. It's a great question and I'm really happy to say I don't know. Mm. Um, and nor should I, because for me, all of this isn't about a director of the museum having the answer. So that question you've just asked, of course you know what I want to do, don't you? I want to have a meal and I want to get a load of people around the table and we'll work it out together. And, and this is the bit for me. This is the, you know, we talk about future being collaborative. You know, I remember saying to everyone at the museum, None of you should be doing anything on your own. Simple as. It's kind of that straightforward. And if there are things where we don't know how to do them, that's great because we can draw on others and we can try and work it out together. And I, I think there's a, I don't know, there's a kind of like a, a paralysis of perfection or, or something going on in museums where, you know, look at exhibitions. What do we do? We go, ta da! There you go, it's done. You know, and actually the processes are, are the bit. We're, we're actually terrible at thinking in public, yeah. aren't we? The processes, thing, that's, you just said it, that's the learning curve the process. Um, and there is no answer actually, because I agree with you there, definitely. Yeah. You, you, need to, you, need, you need the time and space to bring and have those conversations. Mm -hmm. And then, and, and then you might, it's a journey. That's, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's evolving and it's a journey. The uniqueness is, to this gallery is, the journey and the people that are involved in, in yeah. it. It's all been co-curated by the 30 community members. It's their stories. Um, it's the things that they wanted to share. We knew really early on that this was going to be a big experiences gallery. It was a story like gallery. Um, objects came later, so it's not usual. We were being asked about object list, object list. There was no object list till really later on. It wasn't um, aligned with design schedules. And the co-curators held their own and their ground and said, this is a story, but we will take our time to decide 
which is the best way to tell the story, whether it's an object, whether it's maybe, whether it's an amazing object from the British Museum or our own collections, or whether it's sat in my bedroom at home. And that's that's the beauty of this um, project. And I've been speaking to someone today, and we've treated each object as the same. And objects, it's, it's, a, it's, it's an object that's valuable, but it's a story behind that object. That's what we want to show. I think one of the things is that 30 people, all individuals, all are actually amazing people, but you know, each of them with their own passion and interests. And one of the things that's been beautiful to see, actually, is people, almost, you know, some people uncovering bits of their history they didn't know, doing in-depth, deep-dive research. And, you know, we're a university museum. We, we love research, so we encourage, we support that. And, and so I think there's this really... I always thought from the outset that you could bring lived experiences and collections together, and it could be like alchemy if we get it right. But I think one of the things that's lovely is there is actually, there's a lot of historical context, particularly at the beginning of the gallery, actually. You know, there are these really significant moments. So one of, one of the, um, one of the collective, uh, Anandita Gauch, she really wanted to tell the story of when Gandhi visited Darwin in Lancashire. It's an amazing piece of global history, but also local history. And she just absolutely deep dived into that and, and told that story whereas others wanted to tell very personal stories to them and I think for me that's one of the things I really love is you kind of you're zooming in and out So for me, this either or or this weird hierarchy going on, should we just not do that? Um, it's exhausting and uh, really counterproductive. So one of the things, for example, the entire top floor of the museum has been opened up. So it is a home for educational and environmental charities that share our mission and vision. They're based here. They literally, we are their home. And so our programming, I cannot disentangle it from the infrastructure of the museum, from the collections. They will curate things. They will do events. They will get stuff. We will do all of it together. Some of it will be on site. Some of it will be off site. Because ultimately, together, we have a shared commitment to building a more sustainable Manchester. And we will use the museum to do it. So actually, for me, um, I even find the idea of public programming quite old-fashioned. Mm -hmm. um, it feels that it, it, it's just a how do we want to work and be with people? And in a way, the project space at the heart of this gallery is, is testament to that. Yeah. Say this, yeah. The project space, is that's the evolving space for the South Asia Gallery. That's the wish list that we couldn't put because of the space that we have, the square floor meter whatever you call it, it's we could only tell a certain amount of stories. We know we haven't covered the whole of South Asia. The project space is where we do that. We evolve the stories in the anthologies, but we bring in all those new stories and those new ideas and new people. And that will be that that will be the hub. And we've made it really user friendly so it's not high tech yeah. bring in ten people to get the projection on. <laughs> yeah. um, it's uh, it's gonna be the place where our communities are able to feel that they can just get in there and do their do their do what they do. And I think maybe we need to all be a little bit more relaxed mm -hmm. about things not being yeah. unfinished. So we talk a lot about what does it mean for a museum like this to think in public? You know, what does it mean for us to explore ideas with our visitors before the exhibition? How are we evolving those together? I should perhaps start out by explaining that the British Museum um, has a wide network across the UK and across the world, actually, of partners. 
partners we work with to do research, to do training, to do um, excavations, um, community work, preservation of knowledge, a wide range of activities related to <laughs> cultural heritage in a wide sense, material and even non-material. So the partnership with um, Manchester Museum has grown out of that uh, engagement of the British Museum. And we invest a lot of energy, a lot of time, a lot of passion in those partnerships with other museums. The British Museum doesn't have a British Museum X, Y, Z in other cities. We support the existing museums. Um, each year, for instance, with, with 5,000 objects, we, we send around on wrong. And within that network in the UK, uh, we have certain partnerships, which partnership galleries. We work with, if you like, even more intensely. And Manchester Museum as well. <laughs> so when Manchester um, started to think about creating a South Asian gallery, because it's really creation, um, we work together from the very beginning. We work together getting the seed funding um, for Manchester to start working on this project, which then grew into a much bigger project of adding a new wing to the existing building within which this South Asia gallery is located. And from the beginning, the idea was to create this gallery through the community of the of South Asian, um, South Asian inhabitants, if you like, of Manchester, of Greater Manchester. So bringing the community, the South Asian community, to lead on what this gallery should address. What are the subjects? What are the the themes? What are the problems? What are the experiences that are crucial, central um, for that community? and have that inform what the gallery presents to the widest public. It is not fundamentally different in that the British Museum has done a lot of projects with communities. That can be community participation in curating an exhibition, a new presentation in the permanent collection, um, also work in various parts of the world with communities. So that aspect of um, engaging with communities, bring in communities, have them engage with parts of the collection is very much at the heart and has been at the heart of a lot of activities at the British Museum. But I'd say that this South Asia gallery here in Manchester adds a new dimension to it. Um, it's a long process which, when you listen to the members of the collective, was also a process of deciding together what this gallery should address. Absolutely, I think it's an inspiring way of working on, on collections, on exhibitions, on presentations. I think it's a wonder, wonderful way of engaging with the public and have the public inform what the British Museum and what other museums around the world can actually offer. I think it widens the scope of the narratives and the way um, the museum becomes relevant for different communities. And mind you, I don't think that it's only relevant for the South Asian community. Of course. Of course. It is fascinating for anybody, uh, whatever their background. And I think that's something we all have to keep in mind. The museum is a place that offers the opportunity to engage with the heritage of all parts of human history and allow you to activate that heritage and make it your own. And I think that's why museums are such important places and unique places. I don't, I 
wouldn't agree with you because um, curators, curators of the British Museum certainly spend an important part of their time communicating with with communities. Um, that means people from all walks of life, including scholars, um, to explore the meaning, the history of the objects in the collection. So I wouldn't draw that stark you know, contrast between, um, I wouldn't highlight that stark contrast between here's the scholar who does only intellectual work and here is the community that tells their story. Right. A more you know, personal, perhaps more emotional story. But what this offers, this kind of work offers, is that you broaden the scope of the narratives that the museum offers to its public. And I think that's very important. You know, the, the, the work a community does does not um, invalidate the work of the scholar. In fact, the collective doing this gallery was very keen to work with the curators and pick their brains and their knowledge in exploring their own narratives. And I think that's, that's a very beautiful aspect of this.